Hi, I'm Caitlin Skaggs. I am the Associate Vice President for University Relations. And today I'm joined by Ed Oakes, our Associate Vice President for Information Technology. Ed, thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Caitlin. So let's start by talking a little bit about the function of information technology here at Radford. So information technology is here to support both students, faculty, and staff. So we provide a variety of technology across campus from computer labs to networking to all of the server infrastructure to keep the daily operations of the university running um, along with supporting that, those things that go on in the classroom and faculty and their needs as well. So really an integral part of so many aspects of the Highlander experience. Correct, yes. Okay. So as we look to August and welcoming our Highlanders here on campus, I know a lot of folks are wondering what type of equipment, what type of computers do they need to bring? How would you guide students and families in that regard? As I indicated, we have a variety of technology on campus. So we do have computer labs on campus. With that said, we don't have a computer requirement, but we find that most students do bring a laptop of some type to campus. And in general, we encourage students to think about if they already have a laptop, consider bringing that laptop as opposed to going out and buying something brand new. And the rationale there is usually as you get into your sophomore, junior year, you may need a little more powerful computer. As technology continues to change, that gives you the opportunity to wait a year or two to buy something new um, okay. and bring in what you have now. Okay, that makes sense. So use what you have now and then as needs develop, you'll be in a position to better purchase something. Now what about iPads? What about Chromebooks? What are some of those options? Do you recommend those? So in general, we recommend a laptop, notebook, computer of some sort. Okay. An iPad is a good supplementary device. It doesn't necessarily do everything something might need to do. Chromebooks um, are challenging because some of the things we have, we have some faculty members that give exams through a tool called Respondus Monitor. That tool does not work with a Chromebook. So in general, we do not recommend Chromebooks, maybe as a secondary device, but not as something that someone would rely on heavily. So your advice is to wait. Your advice is to not go out and immediately buy something. If a student says, though, I don't have anything suitable right now, I don't have a laptop to take, what type of guidance is out there for what makes a good choice when it comes to a laptop? We provide a general set of recommendations that basically is a minimum that we would encourage people to consider if they're going out right now to buy a computer. Um, that information is available on our website and in general um, a Windows or a Mac notebook laptop computer um, with sufficient memory we are encouraged to be sure it comes with a webcam as we see more and more people are using webcams. Yep. Um, optionally, some people choose, may choose to buy a headset and a printer, um, an inkjet wired inkjet printer to go with that laptop. So printer, you bring up a really good point. If they don't opt for a printer, what kind of options are available here on campus? How easy is it to find a printer if you need a printer? So we do have printers in most all of our computer labs on campus. There's printers in the Bonnie in a variety of locations that students can access. It's often a lot easier if you, you know, you can buy a inexpensive inkjet printer and at least print a draft, rough draft of your paper, those types of things. Sometimes it helps to have that solid form of a document to review. Okay. So there's options both if they want to go the route of purchase or if they want to use what is provided here on campus. Are there individual requirements depending on the college or the program that the student is enrolled in? There are a number of colleges that do have requirements for computers. Those colleges want students to purchase and have a laptop notebook. It may be that a faculty member requires them to bring that to class and that information um, is outlined on our website as well for which colleges do anticipate that students would come and arrive with a laptop computer. Okay, so there's going to be some unique situations and circumstances that dictate a certain type of technology, but we have all that available online and students can figure out if that applies to them. Ed, can we talk a little bit about what our students can expect in terms of the technology that comes with uh, residence halls? So we have a, an extensive wireless network on campus. So every residence hall building has wireless along with all of our academic buildings. So students will use what we call an edu roam Wi-Fi network to connect and they will be able to access that both here and when they go to visit other schools as well. In addition to that we have a cable TV system 
on campus that provides, in the residence halls on campus, you can plug a TV into the wall. We also offer streaming service through that so students can bring a streaming media player, an ITV, a Roku, one of those types of devices, connect to the network and stream their TV through that device as well as their phone or their laptop, however they want to receive that TV. And there also is the ability to record um, content from those live TV channels. Oh, that's pretty fantastic. That a lot of really great options. Yes. I've just heard that the internet here is really good. It's strong. It works well for streaming. Um, in addition to that, what other kind of technology resources? How would you summarize the technology landscape on the Radford campus? The information technology really tries to support students, faculty, and the campus community. So we have created a, a network on campus to support those student needs in the residence halls. We've done a lot to upgrade technology to make sure students always have that high-speed connectivity that they want. We have computer labs on campus throughout campus. We have printers. We have classrooms that are outfitted with technology, providing a number of avenues for students to go experience the things they need to be successful as students at Radford University. What type of software solutions are provided to our students? So Radford University has a campus agreement with Microsoft and that provides all students with the access to download Office at no charge. So many times if you're buying a new computer, they want to sell you an annual subscription to the Microsoft. So right now you can get that for free as a download. There's instructions on our website of how to get to that. So in addition to Microsoft Office, are there other software solutions or apps maybe that are available to our students? So the first thing we recommend is students download the Outlook app. So that is available for an Android or an iPhone. And that provides them access to their email. So they can configure that and as an easy way to access their email at any time they want to. In addition to that, there's an RU mobile app, which provides links to many of the services around campus. And that's very similar to the portal that we have, um, but it just provides a little more, a little richer experience for you when you're using that on your smartphone. So I think many of us are familiar with Zoom. We've all probably spent a lot of time in Zoom meetings. What kind of access do our students have? So Radford University started using Zoom about two and a half years ago. So we have been sort of building our experience and knowledge base around Zoom. And last year we purchased a campus license for Zoom. So all students have access to a pro Zoom account. Um, no additional charge comes as part of you know, what we do. So students can log in to radford.zoom.us and access that information and have a full pro account with access to Zoom. Okay, so Ed, I think there is um, something pretty important students need to think about and familiarize themselves with, and that's the Radford portal. So when they log into it, they have access to a whole host of applications and resources. Can you talk a little bit about that? So the portal is really a central access point for all of the technology services we offer on campus. So we've tried to integrate everything so that students only need that one password, that one duo login, and then they can get to all of those services. So really the portal is a list of links that gets you to all those services to complete the tasks you need to do as a student to be successful. So there's one app in particular that I know we want our students to be really, really familiar with, and it's the one that's called D2L. Talk to us about that, because it involves a little bit of Radford lingo. What does it mean, and why is it so important? So D2L is also known as Desire to Learn. So that is what we refer to as the learning management system, and that's where faculty can upload class content, syllabus, quizzes, Students can submit assignments, so students use that throughout their career at Radford University. Um, and that's a, an, an access point to get into that learning management system, desire to learn. So very, very important for them to know all about D2L. Yes, okay. yes. Okay, so Duo, very important thing. It's probably new for some folks, so it's not enough to simply have a password when you're logging into the MyRU portal. Can you talk to us and explain a little bit about Duo? Duo is a two-factor authentication. Many people have seen that through their banks, through other online services where you now have to have something else when you authenticate. And that just prevents if someone does happen to get your password, that's that second factor so they can't access your account without that. So we use a program called Duo 
There's a smartphone app that we recommend students download and install with that. That smartphone app, when you do a push to that, it will basically have you press a button to acknowledge that. You can also have it call a phone number, although we recommend the smartphone app. You can also register multiple devices with that. So we encourage students um, to think about what secondary device or phone number they can register in case their phone is lost or stolen, that they have a backup way to get into that account. Oh, that's really good advice. I like that feedback. Okay, so Duo is a way to have increased security around accounts to keep our students safe in a digital environment. Correct, yes. What are some other things that students should be thinking about when it comes to online safety and security? One of the things that we find is that students are often targets of cyber criminals and they are looking for students that maybe think something sounds like a real offer. So we've, we've had students receive job offers where they wanted someone to work and do some type of activity. It may be going and buying something that they thought they were going to get reimbursed for or something where they, they pose it as a job with very good pay and usually that student goes and buys something, sends something off to someone in some capacity, and they never get paid for that. So we have those types of things. You know, we've had recently someone goes and creates an email account in Gmail or somewhere else, and they send something pretending to be a friend, a colleague, someone, and they ask you to go buy a gift card. And then they say, take a photo of the gift card and send it to me. So we have a number of scams like that where attackers try to target both faculty, staff, and students. And it's something that everybody should be aware of. If it sounds too good to be true, or if you're suspicious of it, it probably is something you should not be doing. And I know going through the IT safety and security training, which I did as requested, um, that I learned about not clicking on links, not clicking on attachments. If you didn't expect the attachment, that's a sign that perhaps something is not quite right, so just being thoughtful and mindful about clicking can help keep our students safe in their emails. Correct. We try to think through when we, especially from an IT standpoint, when we send something out, we usually tell students to log into the portal and tell them where to click as opposed to embedding a link into the messages. We look at things like that to try to minimize the risk there, but you want to be very careful about any link you click on from an email. Um, if possible, go directly to the site as opposed to clicking on the email. Okay, great advice for our students. So undoubtedly, when our students arrive, I know someone at some point is going to have a technology question. What do they do to get that question answered or to get some support? So our Technology Assistance Center provides support via online requests, so students can submit requests online. We also provide phone support, and we would encourage students even now as they're planning and thinking about things. If they have questions, call the Technology Assistance Center. They're there to help and provide additional assistance and answer any of those questions that students might have. The Technology Assistance Center is located in Walker Hall and we do have a walk-in area there that if students do need to bring their laptop over, if we can't work through something over the phone, then they can come over and we'll walk through them. We do not provide hardware repairs there but we can support software, getting connected to the network, those types of things if they need that assistance. Okay, sounds like a really great resource for our students to be aware of. So I know I've seen you at basketball games before. I know I see you out walking across campus in our dining halls. How would you describe what it's like to be part of the Highlander family? Radford University in general is a family type environment. So I have actually been here for quite a long time. You're not going to tell us how long? So um, I graduated as an undergrad in 92 from Radford. Awesome. Go Highlanders. Um, and started to work here right after that and haven't left yet. So I tell people I came here in 88 and I'm still here. There must be something to stick around for, right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Ed, thank you so much for joining me today. I really enjoyed the conversation. I know that this is just helping our students get more and more excited about joining us come August. What final words do you have for them? Well, I would just say that we encourage students to go ahead and get ready. Think about setting your email up. Think about getting your technology really ready and let us know. Go ahead and call us. Ask those questions. Be prepared. When you move in on campus, you want to get to know the people around you. You don't want to spend your time setting up your technology. That's a good point. So, so go ahead and get prepared. Be ready. And we're here to help you with whatever you need.